on the 10th of October, Polish team chess championship concluded and Polonia Wrocław became the winner and the champion of the entire league. So we decided to invite the players from, uh, from the winner's team for an inter interview to uh, share us a little thoughts about the whole tournament, the whole team and, uh, and the games, of course. And so our first guest is the top player of Polonia Wrocław, Grandmaster Hari Krishna Pentala. Welcome. Hello. Uh, so first of all, big congratulations. It was your back-to-back -back championship title, I assume. Yeah, it. Uh, I started playing for the for Club uh, uh, Polonia Wrocław uh, in the year 2019, and uh, we finished second uh, that year. And uh, we won uh, last year quite uh, convincingly, but uh, this year was full of uh, surprises. You know, a lot of uh, comeback drama and so on. Um, but I'm ve very happy that uh, our team managed to win, um, uh, you know, consecutively. It, wa it was, uh, uh, if you ask me after a couple of rounds uh, during the event, uh, it, it, I, I, I mean, it was quite difficult to say that we, we would be fighting for the first place. Okay, so you mentioned you've been playing for three years and uh, the team from that time was second and double first. So how does it feel to be the top board, the sport leader of such a successful team? Well, I, uh, I mean, in chess, I, I am the top board. Uh, I'm playing uh, uh, on top board uh, for uh, Polonia Wroclaw, but uh, the leader is obviously Mateusz Bartel, who is the, also the captain. And uh, we have a nice uh, team atmosphere, and uh, that's uh, that's what I like about the uh, about the club mainly. So uh, you know, we we have nice uh, interaction among the team members, and uh, we do um, you know we we go out for uh, dinner and have nice conversations and discuss about the games and uh, strategy for uh, next rounds. Uh, and uh, in general, I think that uh, that relates to our result. Of course, uh, uh, you know, with every year, the Polish Extra League is getting stronger. So um, as uh, as expected, this year was uh, probably the strongest, uh, strongest uh, Polish Extra League uh, so far. Or I don't know about the previous years, but uh, it was incredibly strong this year. And um, I think... Uh, just because of i would i would say that uh, uh, apart from the players uh, crucial wins in uh, different rounds i would give the uh, credit to the team atmosphere and uh, team spirit uh, that we won the championship this year so this is what makes the team most successful and uh, it makes you stay with the team i assume for for next years as well yeah, I think I I I'm uh, I played for uh, several uh, team competitions and uh, I have a lot of experience um, on you know how to approach a certain event, especially in when it comes to team competitions. And uh, most most of the teams where I play, uh, I look for this team spirit, and uh, it's not just I play my game and uh, you know I. Uh, I go in my room and that's it, you know, that's not how team competitions are played. And of course, each individual, each team has different strategy. But uh, to me, um, when I'm playing a team event, uh, the interaction and uh, discussing about the chess and a lot of things are quite uh, an important uh, thing for me. And uh, that's uh, that's something which uh, which helps us to to build this nice atmosphere. And also, when when you are playing team competition, you kind of feel your teammate uh, is having a good position or uh, worse position, and that helps uh, to um, to choose your uh, re uh, strategy on your board. So that that. Uh, that kind of uh, uh, understanding comes with a lot of interaction. Okay, so uh, taking into consideration your individual performance, I'm not sure if you are aware of that, but since 2019 you haven't lost a single game in Polish Extra League, which counts for 23 in total. Uh, what do you think makes you so consistent on 
during the Polish extra league? Yeah, actually, the I was just to, uh, told by um, uh, Matos Bartel, uh, who is also the captain, just uh, on a casual uh, talk after the league, he mentioned that I haven't lost. Uh, but usually, you know, such uh, I really uh, it's nice, of course, um, you know that I haven't lost a single game in the Polish league in last three years. Um, but at the same time, I don't uh, give so much importance about um, l- losses you know i believe that uh, the more games you win uh, that's uh, that's going to be uh, helpful for the team and um, uh, and once again for uh, for me uh, it i i was in danger c- a couple of games <laughs> I, I cannot, uh, I can't, uh, you know, uh, say that I was, I played a perfect uh, game or something like that. I was in danger in some games, but uh, somehow I, I always felt like I have to save the game, you know, <laughs> and uh, most of the time it worked. And I hope, uh, I hope I can keep, uh, keep the nice streak. Okay, you mentioned the wins, so let's uh, jump straight into the analysis of the game. Uh, the game comes from uh, the match between Polonia Wrocław and Hetman Płock. You faced uh, the Romanian Grandmaster Konstantin Lupulescu, and uh, the most critical moment of the game, I assume, was uh, the position on the board and what uh, Black chose. So black played knight c4, and uh, what can you say in general about this position and about your decision next move? Well, uh, here I I thought the position is still quite unclear. Of course, uh, black is a pawn up, but uh, as we can see that the pieces are tied down to various things like c6 pawn needs to be protected. And uh, the bishop on e4 is doing a nice job, sometimes attacking the h7 pawn. Um, and knight is controlling the crucial e5 uh, square, like uh, black is uh, not able to play e5 uh, at once. And uh, the reason for playing knight c4 is uh, to attack the pawn on a3, uh, at the same time also play e5 at some point. Um, And here I obviously uh, I had this uh, nice exchange sacrifice idea before reaching reaching this position. And uh, I thought, why not to uh, take the knight here? And then I uh, black doesn't have any uh, active play after this. Um, and knight b2 uh, was something which I had in mind to ha- bring the knight to c4 and therefore controlling the d6 square. And uh, white can simply take control of b, uh, b file with rook b1. And also by moving the knight to b2, uh, white is uh, attacking the pawn on h7 uh, because of the queen on c2 and bishop on e4. Um, so I, I thought this is a nice uh, exchange sacrifice. Um, I obviously, um, I wasn't sure, but uh, I did not felt that uh, White was in any danger after such a thing. So uh, he played, he was also low on time. I, I think that's a kind of important point here. Uh, when, uh, you know, the defending side uh, is low on time, it's quite hard to make uh, the moves. Obviously, Black would like to uh, create some counter play and uh, asking some questions but uh, it's not that simple because after move like c5 he ne- um, one needs to prepare uh, queen e7 c5 or rook c8 c5 but then always there are some issues with with the pawn on h7 and uh, i i obviously white white is also going to threaten some moves like rook b1 um to just uh you know attack the knight on b8 so that's uh that's quite tough so now queen e7 c5 would be nice but then uh it's own pawn is uh, hanging here yeah, you cannot afford yeah. to lose it like yeah it's, it's quite dangerous because bishop g6 queen e2 uh can be quite uh quite unpleasant <laughs> the king is suddenly in, in a lot of danger exactly okay he yeah. played g6 no, yeah, g6 and rook b6. So now uh, it's uh, uh, rook, rook is doing a nice job on b6. Uh, so now the knight on b8 is tied down. So he, uh, knight can't move. And rook c8 is not possible to defend the c6 pawn because of knight d6. And the a7 rook is tied down to defending the a4 pawn. 
Um, so we can see some kind of uh, sad story for black here. Yeah, so the compensation is mostly based on black's inability to move, apparently, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah. he went king g7, queen b2. Queen f8. Uh, so queen f8, I'm not exactly sure what was the idea of queen f8, but I think he wants to... Ah, yeah, c5 is the idea, exactly. So c5, d takes c5, queen c5, somehow um, after rook b8, queen c4. Uh, you know, that's that's the idea. Okay, so you played h4 and the idea... Yeah, if I capture rook b8, rook d1 first, rook d1, yeah. check, king. king g2, and now queen uh, c4. Yeah, you might even get checkmated. So yeah, also out. bishop on e4 is uh, attacked, so yeah, this is, this is not good. Yeah, this is lost. Yeah. Okay, so uh, could you please explain the move h4, why did you play it? Uh, so h4, for example, uh, like... Uh, at some point, you know, rook d1 and queen f1 comes. So the king on uh, king is safer on h2. That's one reason. But also, I would like to get g4, g5. You know, uh, if black doesn't do anything in this position, obviously, I need to attack. Uh, I need to improve my position. And uh, um, the the one pawn which is protecting uh, the king on g7 uh, is f6. So uh, in order to remove that, I need uh, g5. And uh, that was something. And also at some point I would uh, play h5 just to uh, uh, weaken the g6 pawn and perhaps h6, you know. So uh, h4 in general, I think is a nice uh, way to improve my position here. And uh, yeah, c5, what else? Because uh, if black waits further than g4, g5, as I mentioned, uh, is quite dangerous. So now we have uh, a little bit of a, of, an transfer, of a transformation, right? So how yeah. do you evaluate a position like that? Because some space has been created for black, and uh, but you got a pawn in return. So who yeah. is better on, on this uh, exchange? Um, here I uh, I felt that uh, it should be around equal somehow, but uh, I thought it's easier to play this position from uh, the white side because uh, um, the plans are quite uh, quite clear as in uh, what white should be doing in next couple of moves, and uh, that helps a lot uh, in such scenarios, you know. So the exchange. Like uh, obviously, I won a pawn, which is <laughs> which is quite uh, quite an important pawn. So the pawn uh, obviously moves forward to d5 or d6, and that's uh, you know keeping uh, controlling lots of squares here, and that's uh, that's very important. Um, here, I think uh, I I'm not sure how much time I had, but he was definitely uh, in time pressure here. So I think six moves to make. So rook e8, d5, I think he's still fine, knight d7, uh, rook e8, queen e8, uh, queen d4. Um, I think I didn't like rook a6 move that much, to be honest, uh, because uh, the rook is better placed on c5, like rook c7, d6, c5, uh, rook c5 uh, could be uh, the way to play. Um, I think this this should be uh like the rook is much active on uh, c file than on a6 so uh in the game when he played rook a6 uh, after i played d6 now you can see that the rook on a6 is like um you know kind of stuck uh, a8 a7 b6 c6 a5 all the squares are taken from the rook and uh, knight has to stay on d7 in order to protect the d pawn from advancing and which means that the queen is the only piece which can uh, move around a bit uh, so therefore he went queen b8 but i think this is already lost because now h5 and uh, he played queen a7 um, by this time queen d8 and uh, so, sorry queen d5 i mean uh, mm -hmm. queen d5 so with the idea of uh, queen e6, uh, queen e7, so therefore he, uh, yeah, bishop d5 as well. So that's the reason why he went uh, knight f8. Taking the control. And, uh, 
yeah but now the problem is queen b5 with the idea of bishop b7 and look at that rook um, it's uh, it's it's dead it's just um, lost yeah, Amazing. because the knight had to move uh, to f8, and uh, therefore uh, knight uh, knight can't come to c5. That was the issue. And uh, this is a nice uh, nice position uh, where the rook on a6 is just uh, you know can't move. Yeah, so he tried some crazy counterplay, yeah. but it was surely not enough. Took. Yeah, this this uh, uh, some I had to be slightly precise here. Queen is seven, King h six, and uh, Queen is seven just to go into um, uh, you know just winning Queen and pawn end game. It's uh, not much. Uh, queen f eight, King g five, just Queen is seven, just centralize the Queen. You know, I I was making a course on chessable, and I was uh, saying that uh, material is not important in queen and pawn and games, and to 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 uh, to look after uh, as many squares as you can control and keep the queen in the center. So I thought, why not to do the same in my own game? Yeah. Follow your uh, own devices. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and uh, it seems uh, that's the right way. Uh, king g2, queen c6, uh, just king h2. Yeah, king is safe and, over uh, there. Yeah, exactly. It's and good. after queen e3, yeah, if d7, then uh, it would be uh, perpetual after queen f2 and uh, queen f1. You don't want to blunder that. Exactly. So queen e3, uh, king h5, and queen d4. So the idea is that uh, queen h4 is checkmate now. Oh. Yeah. So you need to play g5. And which means d7 and it's queen. Yeah, very clean and technical finish in the in the very end. Uh, I really, I'm really amazed by the way Black had no no opportunity or no ideas to 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 play because his pieces were so so stuck and you exploited it perfectly. A great game yeah it's uh, it's quite tough to play such positions when you have when you are low on time uh, because uh, black needs to calculate uh, at every move every um, every move whereas white uh, as uh, you know i have uh, good compensation i all i have to do is just keep uh, the momentum and then uh, uh, at some point uh, black uh, would collapse because uh, each move uh, to calculate you know if h5 comes or g5 comes uh, what, how, how am i going to uh, um, react yeah so maybe all the play wasn't like 100 percent computer precise but it's not but it's not relevant at all in human chess so exactly yeah, you exactly. To... I, I think uh, for sure uh, uh, the engine would find some kind of um, some kind of um, better way to play, but that's so difficult for humans to find it over the board. Okay, thank you very much for the great interview and for sharing your insight, thoughts, and uh, and all the ideas you you mentioned. Uh, and I invite you all for the next interviews which will come in the near future goodbye